Uh, and you might have to do jail time, uh, but if you ask those individuals what was better, yeah. following your conscience or following illegal orders, mm-hmm. um, they, you know, in the end, uh, they can live with, with their decisions. Uh, mm-hmm. So many people cannot, um, and, and they need a lot of help when they come back to deal with the trauma that they've uh, participated in and they've uh, witnessed. Um, but the first step is stop inflicting more trauma, either on the people that are being occupied or the soldiers. They, everybody needs to come home, and then we can regroup and move forward from there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd like to share a story that, that touched me I saw on YouTube. Maybe, maybe you've seen it yourself, but it's a story by Grant Collins where he tells a story. Um, he was a soldier in Iraq, and... Um, he was sort of in charge of um, a, gr- a group of soldiers. I don't know what they call them, platoons or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And um, but um, his job was, you know, he he. There was a house, and they thought maybe there were so-called terrorists in there, and so he called. He ordered the firing on the house. So they fired a missile onto the house, and they run into the house. Right, he and his group. They run into the house, and he sees a woman sitting there you know, just crying, her her head in her hands, dead child, dead old woman, dead husband, I think maybe two dead children, and this woman just crying. And, you know, the guys realize, oh, there's no there's nobody in here that's worth anything, they're not dangerous. They just run back out. Well, the guy, Grant Collins, who called the order, he just falls apart. And he just, you know, he just falls against the wall and just loses it. He just cannot believe that he has just done this. He has just you know, essentially murdered this woman's family. And um, he says that she comes over to him and she puts her hand on his cheek and she just says, Inshallah. And she just totally forgave him. She just completely forgave him because she realized that he felt such remorse. And that story has always just so touched me. And I thought, if everyone could know, you know, this nameless woman, I don't know who she is, and I'm sure, right. you know, who could we, how could we find her? But, you know, if if we could highlight that other humanity, you know, humani- humanitarian side of, of, of the people and and realize that the power of forgiveness, you know, it says in the Quran, to forgive is the highest act of courage, the highest act of courage. Now, this is something also you will never hear about people talk about Islam. Everybody talks about the violence. And it's like, please, would you just sit down and read the book for yourself? Don't take it from secondhand sources. Sit down and read it for yourself and come back and say that again. It says always you may never instigate the violence, never instigate the violence. And as soon as your enemy puts down the weapons, you must also put down the weapons. And you don't seek retaliation. You you may, you know, if you go back to Mosaic Law, you may, it's legal, but you're not going to score any points doing it. The, you want to score points? Forgive. Who talks about this? Who talks about this? It's very easy to hate Muslims when nobody talks about the truth about Islam. Absolutely. And, and that really goes for, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not a religious scholar, and that'll be the understatement of the day. Um, <laughs> but um, pretty much the limited knowledge I have is that the three major Abrahamic faiths, Christ, uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, they all express the sentiments uh, of, you know, thou shalt not kill, mm-hmm. love thy neighbor, mm-hmm. you know, be a good person, be a good community leader, they, all, the, all these positive things. There will always be individuals uh, with human frailties who want to use the words of these teachings for their own agenda. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with, with all of these religions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but breaking that down in a, in a country, again, that has been uh, brainwashed to see evils. This is, I mean, this is the new communism. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the new ism to fear, because as long as there is something out there to fear, then people will keep their mouths shut uh, and, uh, and will uh, go, go along with the policies. Uh, and I think this is also, this is why the election of Barack Obama uh, really destroyed a movement in, in this country, because I, I think with, uh, I mean, it's all hypothetical, but we are basically living in Bush's third term. The mm-hmm. policies are consistent. Uh, there have been massive bailouts to to the big banks. 
Uh, there's been continued occupation of Iraq and a surge in Afghanistan. We are bombing Pakistan. We are threatening Iran. Uh, domestically, they, uh, we're not going to get a public option for health care. What is the difference? Mm-hmm. Except that there's a different, different guy living at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's a difference in appearance, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. So we need to wake up. Mm-hmm. And um, and we were lulled to sleep, but uh, for what is happening in our name, for the sake of of a whole lot of people around the world, we have to recognize that the same way that after World War II, the world looked at the German people and mm-hmm. said, how could you let this happen? Mm-hmm. They are looking at us now mm-hmm. and saying the same. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of my motivator. Um, you know, it's... It, Part of my background is that my, my mom's parents were Holocaust survivors who fled their homeland of Austria and came to the United States. to They saved their lives and they started over again. Um, and uh, in my speeches, you'll hear me say that it's for them we say never again. Mm-hmm. Well, never again should apply to everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, there should be no more genocide. We, we've come further than that. Uh, and uh, and there is enough out there without uh, greed and power hungry leadership uh, that is making decisions for us that are really uh, to our our detriment and 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 the detriment of of the future. Mm-hmm. I I think that when we finally do find our courage, our collective courage, and our our I don't know what I want to say wisdom I don't know our compassion our ability to forgive everyone ourselves our so-called enemies when we get there we're going to I think we're going to feel a sense of shame that why didn't we get here so much sooner it was so easy yeah. to do this how could we have let this go on this this you know this long how many how many people we could have saved i think of schindler's list you know where he's like counting right. the, the you know i could have saved another one with this coin and i could have saved another one oh you know and looking back in regret and it's like you know time time is up i mean just well i think yeah and i think that's the magic of the story you told about grant collins is that you know it will take uh, the individual effort you know you people mm-hmm. say well what can one person do mm-hmm. uh and i think gandhi said uh that uh, what you do will be insignificant do it anyway <laughs> um because there are ripples mm-hmm. and the ripples uh and because i'm quoting robert kennedy now um but the ripples go out and they can build and that's how you know a movement builds but on the individual level this uh this one soldier showing humanity before a woman who has lost everything allows them to meet, and probably they can't speak the other's language, mm-hmm. but they can meet on an emotional level. Mm-hmm. And there is something for this Iraqi woman to see besides uh, the violence that Americans have brought them and something for the soldier to see besides the brainwashing that the military and, and our society has given him. Mm-hmm. And when we break down those barriers, I, I think... I think we will be pleasantly surprised by what we can achieve that way. And it may be Pollyanna, and it may be wishful thinking. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, with my family in harm's way mm-hmm. and my government uh, inflicting the harm, I sort of maintain this naivete just to move forward mm-hmm. um, and with the hopes of better days coming because they push forward um, mm-hmm. knowing full well that the next several decades will be a- an incredible struggle. So we keep going, we push forward and uh, and move for a better world. And all you have to do is look at your kids and, and decide what would you do for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I would say that you are, are a perfect... Um a perfect stereotype smasher <laughs> coming, you know, Thank Iraqi, you. <laughs> Iraqi, American background, Jewish, uh, Muslim background. I mean, you smash all the stereotypes <laughs> in one eloquent fell swoop. And I mean, my goodness, how, how, you know, what more could you ask for? My goodness. Um, well, thank you so much. It took me a long time to come to terms with uh, my identity, and I would say I'm still doing so. But um, it's, uh, it, like I said, I benefit greatly from from having a voice, and and I greatly appreciate the opportunity to share my voice with you today. Mm, thank you. You're you're a universal soul. Something we should all sort of aspire to. We should all be universal souls. Let's move there and uh, realize that really we have so much more in common than we do differences. Like the Quran Thank says, come, come together on the things you agree on. Leave the differences alone, you know. Amen. 
Amen. I mean. <laughs> okay. So, okay, YouTube channel is Dahlia S. Waspy. I'll spell that. We'll also put a link to the side. Um, that's D-A-H-L-I-A-S, and then Waspy, W-A-S-F-I. I mean, this woman's going to blow your mind. You listen to her talk. Um, she's got the website, liberatethis.com. Hopefully her book will be coming out the end of the year. Also, Liberate This, hopefully the... Um, editors will agree with the name because I think it's a great name <laughs> and um, you know let's bring about change I mean let's we all need to you know come together it's what the whole wake up project is about it's what, it's what the whole thing is about by the way you can visit the wake up project wakeupproject.com so um, till the next show assalamu alaikum shalom peace and um, have a good evening everyone <laughs>